Hello everyone, welcome to problem 1.4 of John Townsend's um, A Modern Approach to Quantum Mechanics. So, for this problem, it states to repeat the calculations of problem 1.3, part B and C, for the measurement of the x component of spin. And it gives us a hint, infer what the probability of obtaining minus h bar over 2 for the x component of spin from the probability of obtaining h bar over 2. So basically what we're doing, part B and C of problem 1.3 are to, you know, suppose you have a particle in this state plus n, then we want to find what the probability um, is to, to get h bar over 2 or minus h bar over 2 um, for the x component of the spin. So essentially we have to find the magnitude square of this inner product um, and then we can also do that for minus x. However, we don't have to do the full calculation because as you'll see, there's a easy way to find what that other probability is. And then for part C, we have to determine the uncertainty of um, the uh, component of spin using this formula from chapter one. And that's about it. So let's just jump into this. So, okay, so we have our state that our particle's in, and if we want to find the probability that we find this particle in, this, um, in the state plus x, um, or if we want to find the probability that this state has an x component of spin of h bar of 2, that corresponds to the, the particle being in the plus x state. And the plus x state can be written as a superposition of our basis states, plus c and minus c, just like our state here is. So plus x is one over root two plus c and one over root two minus c, and this comes from um, the sterner gerlach experiments that are described in chapter one. You can um, you can derive this and you get that. If you have a particle in plus x, then you get a one half chance, uh, 50 chance, 50% 50 chance of getting a particle to have h y over two spin, and 50% chance to have it minus h bar of 2 spin. And so that's why we have these factors of 1 over 2 here. And then I just wrote the bra vector where, which is just the uh, the bras of the basis states in there. So if you want to calculate this, this probability amplitude, then we just simply do the multiplication here. That's all this really is. It's an inner product. Um, so I have the bra vector here and then of the plus x state times um, the n plus n state. So if you do just the um, FOIL method here, just multiply this out, you get cosine of theta over two over root two because the plus c and plus c's, remember if you have, if you take the inner product of the same state, you'll get, uh, you'll get one and take the inner product of um, like plus c and minus z or minus z plus c, those states are basis states and they're orthogonal to each other, so you'll get zero. So those terms cancel out, or so, uh, those terms cancel, and those terms cancel, and then you just get um, for the last multiplication e to the i phi sine of theta over two, um, all over root two, which you can factor out the root two if you want, but that's the probability amplitude. So to get the probability, we just take the magnitude squared of this. And so I just wrote that out here, the magnitude squared of this. And this is complex. So the magnitude um, is gonna have the, um, the second term is gonna have the, um, the minus i uh, instead of the i here. So basically just squaring this and flipping the sign on the complex number here. For the, because that's how you get the magnitude of the complex number. So then you just do the FOIL method again. So basically just multiply this out, you get cosine squared of theta over two, you get uh, um, the e to the minus i phi, cosine theta, theta over two times sine of theta over two, you get e plus e to the i phi um, times cosine of theta, two, uh, theta over two times sine of theta over two, and then you get when you multiply e to the i phi times e to the minus i phi, you get one, and that becomes sine squared of theta over two. And then 
the one over root two here, when you when you multiply them together, you just get one half. So then moving this up here, um, basically the cosine squared of the over two plus sine squared of the over two, that just becomes one. And then for the rest, it's just the other two terms. We have e to the i phi cosine of the over two sine of the over two plus e to the minus i phi times cosine of the over two times sine of theta over two. Now, to make this in a simpler form, e to the i phi, um, using Euler's formula, can be written as cosine of phi plus i sine of phi, and e to the minus sine of phi can be written as cosine of phi minus i sine of phi. So that's what I do here. I basically plug in using Euler's formula into each of these e to the i phi's, and that gives us that line there. So just simply plugging in that. Then basically I just do the multiplication, and what you'll find is um, the, the signs cancel out because there's a plus i sine phi times this term, and there's a minus i sine times, times the same term. So those will end up canceling to zero, and all you'll get is the cosine phi, cosine theta over two, sine theta over two, plus cosine phi, cosine theta over two, times it, sine theta over two. So basically you get two of that term. So all we'll, this just simplifies down to one plus two times cosine phi, cosine of theta over two, times sine of theta over two. With the one half still out front, just hanging there. Now, can we simplify this further? Uh, yes, we can. We can use a trig identity. So the double angle formula states that sine of two times theta is equal to two times cosine theta times sine theta. And if you look here, we have two times cosine of theta times sine of theta, where theta is just whatever our argument is. In this case, it's a dummy variable. In this case, it's theta over two. So using this, we can simplify this term to just be sine of two times our theta. So sine of two times theta over two, that the twos cancel and you just get sine of theta. So this whole thing can be simplified down to one plus cosine of phi, which didn't change, times sine of theta. And that's pretty much the simplest way we can express that with the one half out front. So the probability of, of a particle being in this state, um, the probability of finding it in plus x state would be one half times one plus cosine phi times sine of theta. And of course, you know, depending on the choice of sine of theta, you'll get a different state. And so that's why this is expressed here in those parameters. All right, so now how can we find the probability of finding minus h bar over two or finding our particle in the state minus x? So we know that the probabilities have to add up to one for all our possibilities. And our only possibilities is it can be in plus x or minus x. So we already know the probability of finding it in plus x. So if we know the probabilities add up to one, well, we just take one and subtract away this probability to get the remaining probability. And that remaining probability is the probability that you'd find the state in minus x. So the probability of finding it in minus x is one minus the probability of finding it in plus x. So you just do one minus this, where I distributed the one half through. So you get one minus one half minus cosine phi sine theta all over a half. So one minus one half, well that's just one half. Um, factoring out the one half, and we have a minus sign there now. So we get one half times one minus cosine phi times sine theta. And it's that easy. We didn't have to go through all this calculation again. Um, it's, it's really that easy when you have you know, this two, um, uh, this two state system. And so, yeah, there we go. That's the probability of finding our particle n plus n in the state minus x. We're having a value of minus h bar over two for this thing. Perfect. So now we move on to the uncertainty. So like from problem 1.3, the uncertainty of our, the uncertainty squared of our spin or x component of spin is the expectation value of the squared value of the um, of the x component of spin minus the expectation value of the x component of the x component of spin whole squared so that's just 
it's kind of weird to say that, but anyways, that's, that's what we have to do. So let us first find this expectation value um, for the X component spin. So that's just the probability of, um, oh, I forgot this. Um, that's just the probability of finding our particle in plus X times the value that you would measure. Uh, oh wait, that's not squared, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. So the expectation value here is the probability of finding your particle in plus X times the value you would measure in that state, and then plus the probability of finding it in the other state times the value that you would measure in that state. So plugging all that in, the probabilities we already calculated over here, so you, you just plug them in. So it's, you have the one half times one plus cosine phi sine phi times h bar over two, plus one half times one minus cosine phi sine theta times minus h bar over two. So now you just gotta do the algebra, or the, not really algebra, just do the multiplication. Um, so you get, if you multiply this side out, you get h bar over four plus h bar cosine of phi sine theta over four minus h bar over four. Oh, sorry, that's that side. And then you do the other side, you get minus h bar over four, and then plus h bar cosine phi sine theta over four. So the h bar over four minus h bar over four, that cancels out. And what you get is you get two of these terms, which cancels the two on the bottom. So you get h bar over two cosine phi sine of theta. And then we don't need this, we need this squared. So we're gonna do the right side here. So that squared is just taking that and squaring it. So actually what you get is h bar over two squared or h bar squared over four times cosine squared of phi times sine squared of theta. So that is the right hand side of our uncertainty. Now, for the left hand side, I actually came over here. <laughs> so uh, I was running out of room, so I kind of had to segment this off, but to find this expectation value, it would be the probability of finding your particle in the state plus X times the value that you would measure squared. That's why, that's what this squared means here. So you square the values that you would measure, not the probabilities. So the probability is still one half times one plus cosine phi sine theta, just like we found here, times h bar over two, but we're squaring it because that's, um, we're finding the expectation value of the spin component squared. And then you just do the other side, so one plus, uh, plus one half times one minus cosine uh, phi sine theta, which is the probability here, times uh, whole minus h bar over two whole squared. And if you do the algebra here, what you find is, well, the one half, um, so <laughs> you, I didn't really, I kind of did this in my head when I did this on the board, but um, so you have a one half there, and then you have a one half cosine theta, sine of, that's cosine phi sine of theta. Um, and here you have a one half uh, minus that. So those terms cancel, the cosine stuff cancels, and you just get the one half times that, um, one half times one. And you can just, if you do it, you'll find that you just get h bar over two whole squared. <laughs> that's about uh, all I can really say there. So. Um, once you have that, then you're ready to plug this into our formula up here. So coming over back over here, the uncertainty squared um, of the X component of spin is our H bar over two squared minus this term, which I just unsquared, I, you know, I just uh, took the square out. And so it's minus H bar over two whole squared times cosine squared of uh, phi and sine squared of theta factor out the h bar over two whole squared and get h bar over two whole squared times one minus cosine squared of phi sine squared of theta. So then the uncertainty is just the square root of all that, which gives you h bar over two times the square root of one minus cosine squared of phi times sine squared of theta. And that's really it. <laughs> it's a fairly long problem, lots of algebra, and there's lots of, you know, 
organizing terms together, but it's really not, it's, it's a tedious process, but it's just getting you into that, um, you know, trying to get you into the mindset of thinking in a quantum mechanical way and, and just getting you, you used to doing um, this bra cat notation algebra and stuff like that. So, all right, that's about it. So if you guys have any questions or, or corrections, anything you see that I did wrong, please let me know in the comments below. I will pen your comment so that other people who watch the video see it first. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it and have a